So our research for today is the association of diabetes, smoking, and hypertension with stroke type and vitality. Over the past 60 years, there have been major advances in stroke diagnosis and management, like the development of Doppler ultrasonography, CT scans, MRI, PET scans, and uh, carotid endarterectomy. Also, there have been many major advances in pharmacological treatments, like anticoagulant therapies, antiplatelet therapies, tissue plasminogen activator, and some specific treatments like fluoxetine, which not only decreases depression after a stroke, but also enhances motor function, and sildenafil, which we all know what sildenafil is. Uh, it enhances neurogenesis and synaptogenesis. Previous studies have shown that there is a higher incidence of left hemispheric strokes compared to the right hemispheric strokes. And there have been many theories that have been developed to explain the, this phenomena, like intima media complex differences between the carotid arteries or metabolic demands. There are different me metabolic demands between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Previous studies have shown that diabetes and smoking is more associate, are more associated with ischemic strokes, while hypertension is more associated with hemorrhagic and ischemic strokes. While there's not a single study in the medical literature that mentions anything about the site of stroke compared to these factors. So our sample was collected from these hospitals, Baghdad Teaching Hospital, Kindi Teaching Hospital, Neurosurgery, and Kalnia Teaching Hospital. The duration of the study was from July 2016 to October 2016. The collection of data was by a questionnaire and the personal account of patients. Imaging studies used our MRIs and CT scans. The, the data is analyzed by IBM SPSS version 21 using chi-square and a p-value of less than 0 0.05 for the association of the type and site of stroke with the factors, which are that diabetes, hypertension, and smoking. A consent was taken from the patients to share their data in the study and access to hospital wards was provided by the college and approved by the hospital's administrations. The inclusion criteria was presence of unilateral stroke, availability of data to confirm the diagnosis, availability of brain imaging studies, and the availability of the radiologist's reports on the brain imaging studies. Exclusion criteria were the presence of bilateral stroke and or brainstem stroke or transient ischemic attacks, unavailability of sufficient data to confirm the diagnosis and the unavailability of brain imaging studies. Now I'm going to discuss the results of this study. The study included 61 patients, 27 males and uh, 27 males and 34 females. The mean age for these patients was 65 years and the mean age 69 years. Most of these patients had multiple risk factors like diabetes, smoking, and hypertension, but only seven patients of the 61 didn't have any of these risk factors. As you can see, that, uh, 44 patients had an ischemic stroke, and 17 patients had a uh, hemorrhagic stroke, 31 had a right hemispheric stroke, and 30 patients had a left hemispheric stroke. Regarding the frequencies of the factors that we studied, 42% 40, of the sample were diabetics, 73 were hypertensive, and 19% were smokers. Now, uh, we said the association between the type of stroke and diabetes, smoking, and hypertension. Regarding diabetes and smoking, there was no significance, no statistical significance well, with the type of uh, stroke. But regarding the hypertension, you can see that there is the p-value is 0 0.025, so there is an association between hypertension and the type of stroke, but we didn't know the, the association with the hemorrhagic or the ischemic, so we used, uh, we used the odds ratio, and the odds ratio tells us that uh, there is might be an association between uh, the hemorrhagic stroke uh, and hypertension. But uh, regarding the side of stroke with diabetes, smoking, and hypertension, regarding the three factors, there was uh, no association. And so can, how can we explain these uh, results? First of all, the main factor is the small sample size. This, uh, the sample uh, is too small uh, to find an association. Also, we depend on the personal accounts of the patients, and most of the patients had an elevated blood pressure and elevated blood sugar, as they told us uh, by the measurements that they take in, uh, in, their, uh, in their homes or when they went to the uh, nurse, but they were not uh, diagnosed by a physician. So, uh, they were excluded from uh, these results. Uh, also, we, know, we knew from the previous study that diabetes is associated with skip strokes, as my colleague told, uh, told you, and uh, also for smoking. But hypertension, there are no studies. For the neutrality, this study is the first one to study these three factors. 
but we didn't find any association, unfortunately. The conclusion that it's not this hypertension and smoking are not associated with differences in structural health, but uh, we found that there is an association between hypertension and hemorrhagic strokes. What are the future prospects for this study? We, we need additional research on this topic, especially for the child and uh, the three factors that we mentioned. We need a promotion of awareness programs to urge the people to do periodic checkups for diabetes and hypertension especially. And uh, we need to devise a here to explain the underlying mechanisms for the differences in the increase in stroke between the two hemispheres. Now, so why study stroke laterality? Previous surveys have shown that there is a difference between the neurologic onset, the time interval from the neurologic onset to the admission to the ERs, mainly because <coughs> there are differences in the manifestations of stroke. It has been associated, it has been seen that the interval of the neurologic onset to the admission is significantly less with left hemispheric strokes rather than the right. It might be because that the manifestations of right hemispheric strokes take time to manifest. <coughs> Another reason is that there are differences in the management of patients with left-sided stroke compared to the right-sided stroke. Physicians tend to concentrate to, on left-sided strokes patients rather than the right. Maybe because it has poorer outcomes and maybe because the disability is greater with left-sided strokes or simply because the manifestations of right hemispheric strokes are undiagnosed. There is a need for different rehabilitative therapies. As we all know that the functional uh, there are functional differences between the two hemispheres. So when a stroke hits any of the hemispheres, we have different functional disorders. So for example, for the left hemisphere, we might need speech therapies or antidepressant therapies. Whereas for the right, we might need cognitive therapies or <coughs> spatial therapies. There's an importance in discerning neurologic disorders associated with right hemispheric abnormalities because the right hemisphere is more associated with functional disorders rather than uh, with behavioral disorders, I apologize, with behavioral disorders rather than functional disorders like spatial disorientation in space, time and place or uh, communication problems. Um, now there are, uh, as my colleague told you, there, there are differences in neurologic syndromes regarding the two hemispheres. For example, in most patients uh, with a left dominance we found that they expressed aphasia, expressive aphasia or receptive aphasia, and they were more depressed. But regarding the right side, most of the patients have what's known as aprosodia, which they can't understand the uh, emotions, the speech. And we met a patient with anosic nausea. She denied that she had a stroke, and she insisted that she is okay, and there, are, uh, there, is, no problem. there is no problem with her. And now we, we can like to thank Professor uh, Ali for his help in making this uh, project and Professor Ahmed uh, Samir.